In this video, we are going to be learning how to create a quest system. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make the quest UI so the player is actually able to see what quest they are on. So inside of started UI, let's go ahead and make a screen GUI. And then we could rename this to quest GUI. And then inside of here, what we're going to do is we're going to add a frame. And then we're going to make the anchor point 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5. And then I'm just going to drag this kind of like over here where I want the quest to be shown. And then for the size, I'm just going to make this 0 0.2. And then I'm going to drag it back here. And then I'm just going to make it look something kind of like this, I think would be pretty good. Maybe a tad bit bigger. So something like this probably. Real quick guys, if you guys have been wanting to learn how to script on Roblox, check out the first link in the description. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this semi-transparent like this. And then I'm going to add, or first I'm going to rename this to quests frame. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a text label and then go ahead and set its anchor point as well. I'm going to make the background completely transparent. And then for the size, I can go ahead and make this 0 0.5. And then I'm going to make the text scaled right here. There we go. So I'm also going to change the font to make it look a little bit better. And then I'm just going to go ahead and change the size. Maybe something like this would be good. Now I'm just going to change some of the text properties to make it look a little bit better. And then we're going to have this text um, say quests. And then we could rename this to quests label. Now inside of the frame, I'm going to add a canvas group. And then we're going to set its anchor point as well as its size to like 0 0.2. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and make it look really small because I want it to be kind of like a bar. So on the X axis, I'll just actually go ahead and make this one. And then the position is going to be 0 0.5. But for the Y, we can put like, let's do 0 0.2. I think maybe like 0 0.21. I think that looks pretty decent. And then the size, I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger, maybe like 0 0.01. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a UI corner to this. And then for the, for the scale, I'm actually going to make it like 0 0.9. And then let's go ahead and add a UI stroke to it. And there we go. So now that we have kind of the label set up, what we're going to do is we can actually go ahead and duplicate this quest label and kind of drag it down here. And then basically we're going to rename this to quest one label. And then we're going to add a folder inside of the quest frame and we're going to rename this to quest one. Actually, instead of being quest one label, we're just going to rename this to quest label. And then let's say our first quest, we want it to collect five coins, for example. Now this would be our quest label so the player actually knows what quest they're going to do. And then we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this quest label, drag it down here, and then this will be the progress label. So we'll rename this to progress label. Now, since we wanna collect five coins, it's gonna be zero out of five. And then basically this is just gonna update every time we collect a coin. So we basically have the UI portion done. So what we could do is I'm gonna actually make this completely transparent. And then inside of the quest one folder, I'm actually going to make both of these text labels invisible. So now let's make a script inside of server script service. And then we could just rename this to main and let's get the player service. So we're going to say local players is equal to game colon get service players. And then we'll say players dot player added colon connect to a function. And then we'll put the player inside of here. And first things first, let's go ahead and create some leader stats. So we'll say local leader stats is equal to instance.new folder. And then we're going to parent this to the player. And then leader stats.name is equal to leader stats, of course. Now let's go ahead and make a coins variable. So we'll say local coins is equal to instance.new. And then we'll put this as a number value and then parent it to the leader stats. And then we'll say coins.value is equal to zero. And then we'll say coins.name is equal to coins. So now that we have our leader stats set up, we're going to actually make a module script. So inside of the replicated storage, let's go ahead and add a folder and rename this to modules. And then let's go ahead and add a module script to this folder. Let's rename the module script to quest system. And then we're going to say local quest system and then return quest system. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the quest that we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to say quest system dot quest is equal to a table. And then inside of this table, what we're going to do is we're going to say quest one is equal to, and then we're going to make another table, and then we're going to give it a couple of values. So the first value we're going to give it is we're going to give it a value called completed, and then we're going to set this value to false. Second value is going to be something called progress, and then we're going to set this to zero. And then the third value is going to be progress needed, and then we're going to set this to five since we want five coins to be collected. So now we're going to go back into our main script. And then we're going to give the player an attribute. So we're going to say player colon set attribute. And the attribute name is going to be current quest. And then since the player just joined the game, their current quest is going to be equal to quest one, just like that. 
So now up here, let's make a function that actually makes the quest um, labels visible. So we'll say make quest label visible. And then we can go ahead and insert the player here. So we'll say local player GUI is equal to player wait for child player GUI. And then let's make sure the game knows that this is a player. So now let's get the quest UI. So we'll say local quest GUI is equal to player GUI wait for child quest GUI. Let's go ahead and make sure we spell that right. And then we need to get the quest frame. So we'll say local quest frame is equal to quest UI wait for child quest frame. So now that we have the quest frame, what we're going to do is we're going to say local current quest is equal to player colon get attribute current quest. And then we're going to say local quest folder is equal to quest frame find first child. And then we're going to pass through to string current quest. And then we'll say, for example, if not quest folder. So if the quest folder doesn't appear for some reason, then we could just warn could not find quest folder. And then we can do end. Now we can go ahead and loop through every text label inside of the quest sold folder. So we'll say for I comma text label in pairs quest folder colon get children do. And then we're going to say if text label is a text label, then and then we'll say text label dot visible is equal to true. So now let's go ahead and call this function down here in this player added event. So we're going to say make quest label visible and then we're going to pass to the player. So let's go ahead and test this out. And if we play the game, as you can see, now we do have our quest appearing. Now we want to make it so that this quest actually updates whenever we collect a coin. So to do that, what we could do is first things first, we need a way to collect a coin. So I'm just going to grab a simple coin model from the toolbox. So I'm going to search for a coin and then I'm going to use this coin right here. And then I'm just going to make a simple coin pickup system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a tag and I'm going to rename this tag to coins and then go ahead and tag this coin with it. And then I'm just going to add a click detector inside of this coin. And then I'm going to make a bunch of coins here. So I'll just go ahead and generate a bunch of coins here that we are able to pick up. And then I'm just going to make a folder and rename it to coins just so the game looks a little bit more clean. There we go. So we're going to add the coins to the coins folder. And now let's go ahead and add another script into service script service. And then we could just rename this to coin pickup. So let's reference collection service. So we'll say local collection service is equal to game get service collection service. And then we could say local coins is equal to collection service get tagged and then we'll, we'll pass through coins here. So now we should have every single coin that we tagged with the tag coins, which is all the coins. So now we're going to do repeat task dot wait until number of coins is greater than one. So this way we, we can go ahead and halt the script until the coins load in. And now we can just go ahead and loop through all the coins. So we'll say for I comma coin in pairs and then we'll do coins do and then we'll say local CD is equal to coin find first child click detector. And then we're going to say we're going to make sure the script knows that this is a click detector. And then we'll say CD dot mouse click colon connect to a function. And now inside of here, we actually get the player who clicked this coin. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and destroy the coin and then we're going to get the coin. So we're, we're going to say local leader stats coins is equal to player find first child leader stats find for child coins. And then we'll say leader stats coins value plus equals one. And then inside of here, what we're going to do is we're going to say local current quest is equal to player get attribute current quest. And then we'll say if current quest does not equal quest one, then we can return end because then we know that it is a different quest and we don't want to do anything if we collect a coin. So now that we know that it is quest one, what we could do is we can go ahead and increase the progress. So first we need a quest system. So we'll say local quest system module is equal to require aim dot replicated storage colon wait for child modules colon wait for child quest system. So now inside of our quest system, we're going to make a function and then we're going to say function quest system dot update progress. And inside of here, we are going to pass through the player. And then basically now we're just going to write quest system module dot update progress. And then we're going to pass through the player. So now inside of here, we're going to say local current quest is equal to player colon get attribute current quest. And then we're going to go back to our main right here. And then we're going to copy everything here up to the quest folder. And then we're going to paste it inside of this function. And then we can actually go ahead and delete this current quest since we already have that. And then now what we could do is we can go ahead and look for the quest inside of this little quest table here. So we're going to say local quest is equal to quest system dot quest. And then inside of here, we're going to do hard brackets and then we're going to pass through the current quest. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to update the progress for the quest. So we're going to go ahead and do quest.progress plus equals one. And then now what we could do is we can go ahead and since we have the quest folder, what we can now do is we can go ahead and get the progress label. So we'll say local progress label is equal to quest folder, find first child, progress label. And then we'll do progress label dot text is equal to quest dot progress. And then we're going to concatenate this with a division sign. And then we're going to concatenate this with quest dot progress needed. And then we're going to make sure these two things are two strings so that it actually pops up as a string. Same with this one. There we go. So let's go ahead and test this out. So let's go ahead and play the game. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click a coin. And as you can see, now it updates within our quest system. But the problem is when we actually get the amount of coins that we need, it doesn't stop and go on to the next quest. So this is a pretty simple fix. All we need to do is after we add our quest progress and we update the label, what we could say is if quest.progress is greater than or equal to quest.progress needed, then we can go ahead and change the quest to completed. So up here, we can actually just make a local function and we'll rename this to update quest. And then inside of here, we're going to pass through the player as well as the quest. And we're going to also pass through the quest folder. So let's go ahead and call update quest right here. And then let's pass through the player, the quest and the quest folder. So what we're going to do is basically when the quest is finished, we can go ahead and make these two text labels invisible. So what we're going to do is we're going to say for I comma text label in pairs quest folder colon get children do. And then we'll say if text label is a text label, then and then we'll do text label dot visible is equal to false. So now that we go ahead and make everything invisible, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change our attribute to the next available quest. So let's say, for example, our next quest was to click this part right here. So let's go ahead and make a part and then let's go ahead and just make it. For example, we could rename it to click me part and then we'll go ahead and like make this green or something like that. And then we'll add a click detector inside of it. Let's go ahead and make this part anchored and then let's go back into the quest system and we can now add a new quest. So we're going to say quest two is equal to a new table and then we're just going to say completed is equal to false progress is equal to zero and progress needed is equal to one because we just need to click it once. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and change this completed value. So we'll say quest dot completed is equal to true. And then we're going to go ahead and loop through this quest table once more. So we're going to say I comma quest in pairs or actually we'll say for quest comma values in pairs quest system dot quests. And then we're going to say do and then we're, we're actually going to make sure this says I pairs and then we're going to say if values dot completed is equal to true, then continue end. And then after this, we're going to say if values dot completed is equal to false, then we're going to do player colon set attribute of current quest to to string quest just like this. And then we're going to go ahead and return. And then up here, we're going to also make a variable. We're going to say local new quest is equal to nil. And once we find the next quest that has not completed, what we can do is we can say new quest is equal to to string and then quest. So now that we have a new quest, we want to go ahead and show it right here. But we actually do not have the GUI made. So what we can do is we can go ahead and duplicate this quest folder and re rename it to quest two. And then inside of here, let's go ahead and make both of these visible so we can change them. And then for the quest label, we want to make it say click the green part. And then we can actually probably make this a little bit bigger. And then for the progress label, we'll move it down here. And then we'll have this say zero out of one. So now that we have that set up, we can go ahead and make this invisible once again. So now that we have it visible, we can go back to our quest system script. And then we want to go ahead and get the new folder. So down here, now we're going to pass through the quests frame. So that way we could go ahead and make a new value. And we're going to change this return from return to break. So that way we don't ent we don't exit out of the whole function. So now what we could do is we could say, and then also actually up here, we want to add the quests frame. So we'll say local new quest folder is equal to quests frame, find first child, new quest, just like that. And now we can go ahead and loop through the new quest folder. So we'll say for I comma text label in pairs, new quest folder, colon get children, new, and then we'll say if text label is a text label, then we'll do text label visible is equal to true. 
So now we should have this working so that basically whenever we go ahead and complete our quest, it then shows the next available quest. So let's go ahead and play the game and test this out. So let's go ahead and collect five coins. And then once we collect the fifth one, it looks like we have an error. So let's go ahead and see what the problem is. All right. So I found out what the problem is. All we need to do is change this I pairs to pairs since this is a dictionary and not an array. So if you go ahead and try this one more time, hopefully we do not get an error and let's go ahead and collect our coins. And then now, as you can see, we now have a new quest that says click the green part. So now we can go ahead and make this the same thing so that if we click the green part, it goes ahead and updates. So we can do that really quickly by making a new script. And then we could just rename this to um, quest to handler, for example. So what we're going to do is we're going to say local click me part is equal to game dot workspace. Wait for child click me part. And then we'll say local CD is equal to click me part. Wait for child click detector. Now we can do CD dot mouse click colon connect to a function. And then we get the player here. So we're going to say local current quest is equal to player colon get attribute current quest. And then what we could actually do is we could check if this quest is the second quest. So we'll say if current quest does not equal quest two, then we're going to print not on the right quest and then we're going to return. So now, now that we know that it is on quest two, what we could do is we can go ahead and go to coin pickup and we're going to, we're going to copy this quest system module and paste it up here. And then we'll just say quest system module dot update progress and then pass to the player. So this should now be everything that we need to go ahead and make this work. So let's go ahead and play the game. And now if we go ahead and click this click detector, as you can see, it says not on the right quest. But if we collect five coins now, as you can see, does go ahead and make an error actually. So let's see what the error is. And then it says argument argument one missing or nil in quest system. Okay, so I think if we go ahead and delete this line of code right here, we can go ahead and see if it is now working. So after we collect five coins and then click on the green part. Okay, so it still has the problem. And the problem is guys, once we click, once we complete our second quest, then we will have no values that have the completed value of false because all the quests will be true. So we never actually update this new quest and then this returns nil. So what we could just do here, guys, is we could say if new quest is equal to nil, then print you completed all the quests and then we can go ahead and return end. So now if you play the game, as you can see, it should now be working. So if you go ahead and click on the green part, we have completed all the quests here. And then let's say we wanted to add a reward for completing each quest. That would be pretty simple. All we need to do is make a new value inside each of the quests. So we'll say reward for quest one will be 100 coins. And then the reward for quest two will be equal to 500 coins. All we need to do inside of this update quest function is up here, we're going to say local reward is equal to quest dot reward. And then we're going to do local leader stats coins is equal to player find first child leader stats. And then we're going to do find first child coins. And then we'll just do, for example, coins.value plus equal reward, which is going to be 100 for quest one and 500 for quest two. And we need to rename this to leader stats coins. So let's go ahead and now test this out. So when we collect five coins, we should get an extra 100 coins added, which we do. And then once we click this green part, we should get 600 coins here. There we go. So guys, I hope you guys learned how to create a quest system. I know it was a very long video, but it's kind of a complicated system to create. And obviously you're going to have to replace certain things with things in your game, obviously, depending on what you actually want to do. But anyways, I'll see you guys later.